We love you! Hello and welcome to Tribe Talk, the Galway Hurling Podcast, with me, Patrick Early, and David Connors, where each week we'll discuss and divulge all the goings on in Galway Hurling. We'll be taking an in-depth look at the club scene and of course focusing on Intercounty. In this, Shane O'Neill's first year at the helm, all of which we'll do in the company of some special guests and former Galway greats. So do come along and join us on Tribe Talk, Galway's dedicated hurling podcast. Well, it was a mixed weekend from a Galway's perspective in terms of the small ball. Um, Camogie, I suppose, Patrick, we'll probably start off with that before we go into the the Leash under-21 game. Um, Disappointing result in the end, I suppose. Um, You know, probably Kilkenny fully deserved their win. On reflection now, when looking back, and probably we thought that at the time, even though the penalty might have looked a bit harsh, you know, late on, in terms of a throw ball and that. But, um, yeah, I I, I suppose I was at it, so you probably weren't at it, so you probably might have... uh, have seen as much of it as I would. Did you get? Did you get a look at it on the telly, or did you? Did you, did you, get, oh, yeah, did you get a chance sure to see it? it? Yeah. yeah. What did you sure make of it? Ah, I think you know you couldn't you couldn't question work rate or honesty or any or any of that from the in fairness that was that was fully on show and in terms of a a battle like it was it was it was outstanding to just to watch it and observe it and see the how physical and how good of tacklers these ladies can be and like. You know, if, if that game was played a couple of years ago, like we'll say, for example, none of that would have been allowed and just it would have been a, a just a, a free fest. Like, in fairness, I thought the ref was actually fair, fairly good in, in, in that mm. respect in terms of let, 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 letting it go and allowing the players to tackle, which they're meant to do now. Um, so in that regard, it was it, it, it was fascinating to, to watch. But in terms of the quality of ball playing, I suppose, compared compared to last year, like there were there were poles apart. It was a totally different game and conditions certainly played a factor and you could see even I know saw Crow Park to, to, to struggle as much in terms of it, the surface as it did this this week where mm. days where it was relayed after a concert or something, you know, but um mm. no, I thought it being such a battle like that, I I it, it just didn't play into Galway's hands in, in my eyes. Like I think, you know, in terms of Overall quality of player, I think we have fifteen players that are better than the Kenny's fifteen players as as ball players will say, and um, you know on the kind of game they were playing, I, I just felt it didn't suit the likes of your Eva Dunn, who was a Neve Kenny's like or two of the classiest um hurlers and hurlers in the country, like you know, and that middle third was just so packed and there was just so little space and room to get get their running game going. I just felt they they struggled in that regard and. You know, in fairness, the two McGraths up front, I thought, were, I thought were very good, but a lot, a lot of girls just didn't get going as, as, as the, as the management team would have liked. And like, you know, in, in reality, you couldn't have any complaints about the results. The, the better team definitely won, no, no question about it. Um, but in saying that, you know, the, the two big calls in the game both went went against Galway. That being the penalty Kenny got, and also the. The hand pass that went against Galway in the first half when mm. um, was it was it Neve Kenny was gone clean clean through one goal. Yeah, Ada Shirley um, said her. Ada Shirley, sorry. Yeah, yeah, um, which you know, having looked back at it, was definitely the wrong call. Like you know, but these things happen. You know, it's just that 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 hand pass is it's become a bit of a joke. Like you know, and I think mm. if you got a close up of the Kenny one, I guarantee you it was it was a proper hand pass as well. It was the same sort of thing that were just about to lift the hand. You know, um, but it's just. Limerick are the masters at it too in terms of like on telly half their half their ambassadors look like throws, but when you if, if you were looking up at them right close, you 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 definitely see that the vast 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 majority of them there is the slightest bit of bit of separation. But I don't know, it's not it's not something you can easily change or easily monitor in fairness to refs like you know. Mm, that's for sure. And just on, in terms of the pitch, strangely enough, they actually segments of it I'd nearly spray say spray painted green. Just to take the ba- the bare look off it, especially oh. out near the sideline. So it was the the pitch has gone gone undergone. I'd say serious. You know, I'd say it's never has many games to take, especially at this time of year. Like so, it's you know it, it, it's understandable in a way that it hasn't stood up. Like you know, um, just in terms of the Galway performance, I suppose yeah, disappointing. But Jesus, like you know, they, they didn't score for forty minutes, and they, they still drew level with what four minutes to go. You know, they still had an opportunity there, and it looked like they were the in the ascendancy at that point and. Maybe, maybe the penalty was maybe maybe a bit harsh. Like you know, it didn't seem Definitely. like there was a whole pile in it. Like you know, he'd let he'd let a lot of that go around midfield. You know, 
in fairness to him, like I, I'd agree with you completely. I thought I thought he he had a great game. It really really suited the, the game as a spectacle. Like I know there was a lot of rooks and you know bodies around four or five bodies around the ball, but I thought as as a spectacle overall, it was it was actually a very good Camogie game, and there was a there was plenty of high standard in as well. Um, I suppose. Just, just to repeat what you said, it was a brave effort by them. You, you couldn't fault them. For, they, they came up narrowly short, and I suppose just the, what they've done over the last two years between the players and the management team, they're to be commended because you know they've probably taken Galway to a, a level of consistency and level of performance that we haven't seen. So look, it should, there's no point dwelling too much on a defeat. Like you just, you know, just probably more than anything else, we want to commiserate them. You know, and you know, no doubt they'll probably be back at the business into things next year again. You know, and. You know, that bit of hurt can spur you on a lot. And we saw probably Sport Kikini on at the weekend as well, you know, losing three All Ireland finals in a row. So, you know, please God, we're, they're back next year. It's, you know, another not so nice journey coming home from Dublin. You know, I seem to be making a habit of it at this stage. Maybe I'm the bad woman in terms of going. But anyway, <laughs> we, we, we'll, we'll leave it there. Um, so you were at the, the under 21 game. We can really call it full time score. Galway, 421, Lee, seven points. Um, Scoreline tells us it all, really, doesn't it? Um, it's probably look at the good aspects first. It was probably good to get a game, good to get the you know the logistics out of the way in terms of travelling. I realise they they went up. I think I heard Jeff Berlinski give an interview, and he said they travelled up and maybe a few lads got lost on Saf and they yeah. might they might know the they might know the journey a bit better next time round. You know, because a lot of lads probably might have been travelling like this before, or you know, you might be too used to driving because we forget they're so young. But uh, yeah, what were your initial thoughts on the game in terms of, you know, performance? We, we, well, we can't take much from a performance, but just in, in terms of first day out. I think you'd have to be happy enough in fairness. I think Jeff was happy enough after we were chatting to him. Like, you know, um, it was never going to be a game where you were going to find out what call we were like under pressure or that. Like, it was more a case of getting a half competitive game together and just trying to gel together as a team, really, because, you know, you're bringing together three, two or three kind of winning All-Ireland All winning minor teams and you're taking bits and pieces from every team and now you're gelling it together to make one hopefully serious under-20 team. Um, so a lot of these lads would have heard together in school obviously going up along but as a whole team like that's really is their first competitive game together so obviously so um, certainly I think it came across like they're very comfortable playing with each other and there's a good understanding among the team and how they're trying to play and you know everyone's role I, I thought that was one of the most pleasing aspects to take away from it now like you obviously take into consideration that they were implementing their game plan against a team that maybe were 50% of uh, of what Kenny are going to bring on Friday night like you know and like they just really were that bad and in the second half they were geez they were pathetic and like they weren't they weren't even fit like to be honest um, mm -hmm. you know and I, we were some bit competitive um, the first half and each put together a couple of nice moves going forward and you know cause one or two small problems Derek Fahey had to make a, a, a right good save in fairness to him at one stage um, but all in all like you know Galway's first four attacks could all have been goals um, which is good to see like you know there, there, there's a lovely blend in the team there's, a, there's plenty of power and pace and size and then there's a lot of cl classy hurlers as we, as we go down go down through it in, in a bit mm -hmm. no doubt Um yeah. But, you know, I, as you mentioned there as well about the logistics of it all, like it wasn't, it's, it's not a case of jumping on a bus for these lads and, and head, heading down the motorway like, like like they'd be used to, you know, these, these lads were, were driving down the road, some of them together, a lot of lads on their own, depending on kind of where you're from or what club you're with or, or, or what not, like, you know, so they um got fed in Gulland's Hotel at four o'clock, I think Jeff said, and head down the motorway thereafter. Um, and you have a few of them got lost all right like you know so um, the fact that the process is going to be the exact same Friday night in terms of like they know what I suppose Port Leash entails too and that when, when you get there what the setup will be as regards the dressing room or getting togged or whatever <coughs> um, good to have all that out of the way and like everything give the exact same fixture this Friday night um, so it's basically a repeat um, of, of what they did last week um, but just a bit more of a challenge when they actually take to the field to come. <laughs> yeah, exactly. well, that, that's for sure. You definitely imagine that'd be the case. Well, well, just before we touch on Kikini, because we will, we will in a little bit there. 
Um, I want to just kind of take us through Galway's kind of style of play. Now, you said there it's it's a lot easier to implement um, when you're playing a team maybe, you know, that aren't going to, you know, really put it up to you like a Kikini side will be in, in comparison to Leash. But uh, you kind of you, you outlined a few points here in the north. And was, I watched it on YouTube and, you know, it's hard to take much from a game on YouTube because there's only one camera and there's very little instant replays and, you know, and the game was just ragged, say, for the last 20 minutes. Yeah. I'd say the last 15, 20 minutes, it was, you know, Galway pushed right up. I'd say Leash were pinned inside their own half. They couldn't get out at all. But just in terms of the things you were there, like, say, it was kind of a, you felt it was a, a modern brand of hurling with attacking wing backs, you know, half backs dropping deep, you know, clogging the middle third, we'll say, like a lot, a lot of teams do at the moment. Um, Linkmen, like we touched on it, even the preview, we understood that McLean and Kinnear were going to be Linkmen in midfield, you know, you know, getting 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 in the plenty of ground in the legs as well as you know linking attack and defence, um, lower ball into the corners, you know, diagonal ball at times as well, you know, and uh, you know, probably and plenty of ball through the lines as well. I suppose one thing about it is that probably if we can probably do half of that against Kilkenny, we'll probably be doing well because we won't, we won't. They'll definitely be probably more physically ready for sure anyway, and definitely hurling wise, we won't have as much of the ball. Definitely, yeah. And like in fairness, it's a you know chatting to Jeff after the game as well. Like he's moving with the times, and that you know he's not he's not playing like he played with the, the his minor teams of the last five four or five years. You know he's playing modern hurling as such, and molding his his team and his brand brand of hurling around what Limerick are doing and what Waterford are doing. In that you know there's no such thing as I suppose an an out and out defender. Everybody has the license to get forward. Like you know. Um, O'Shane Salmon even got up, got up, tore up the line at one stage in the first half and, and got a shot away. Like you know, mm. so that was clearly evident what they were doing. And you know, when you speak to them afterwards, it get then gets emphasised in your head that, that that is what they're trying to do. They're trying to bring their game into the, I suppose the the twenty twenties now as it's going to be because this is the way hurling is going to be for the for the foreseeable. You know, um, and you, you have to you have to say. It, there are athletes in that in that squad well able to well able to do it, and players were picked in their positions accordingly, like, you know, in that, we'll say, your two wing-backs, Jim Rickley Cummins, in a totally new position for, for, for him, but the best athlete on, on, on that Galway team, and, you know, defensively, he wasn't, he wasn't overly, overly stressed or overly tested out by any means, but going forward, he was, you could really see what, what he's capable of, and, you know, the ability to get up and down with him between the 21s, like, you know, he, he was exceptional in that regard, and didn't chat to see the same way over the other side, didn't have probably the same impact in terms of score getting or getting getting shots off, um. But most of that really was due to the fact that more play happened down down this this side of the field. We'll say with with Kill Commons and um Connor Walsh in particular, they, they linked up very well. So that was hugely prevalent in in what they were doing, um. And then there was also the the mix of you know, you had Fleming kind of held. held he kind of stayed stayed in deep, really mm. playing in or in around the twenty one the whole time and moving across the line rather than really coming out out too far. Um, and yeah, Oshin Flannery was probably was there there with them, and Don O'Shea was kind of a bit bit freer. He wasn't restricted to to the full forward line. Um, he came dripped in and out, and he wasn't really the the um target for a lot of direct ball inside. It was more more so played played for Fleming in particular and Flannery mm. as well. Um and just on Flannery as well, just to, just to say that he hasn't done a whole pile since the since the county final. He's he was struggling to shake off that hamstring knock. So um it was great to get the whatever he got, forty, forty five odd minutes into him into mm. him the last day. Um and you can see you could definitely see he he was rusty in fairness, like but that'll bring him on a ton a ton ahead of next week and he, he seemed to come through it fine anyhow. So that was hugely positive. But um in Fleming I suppose they kinda have the the Aaron Galan sort of figure. Um, the kind of lad who can win it whatever way it comes, um, and in the first quarter, right, he he got an, an amount of ball down the the stand side and into that corner, um, and most of it very straightforward ball, like from your mm. wing backs to your midfield, straight down the line. But he was making the run from from the edge of the square out diagonally, we'll say to meet it, you know, and always had the step in his man. And when he gets it, in fairness, more often than not, he heads one way, and that that's, that is for goal. <laughs> And he's a hugely difficult, difficult man to stop. Um, I would say he got, he was their their first four. I would say shot or scores. I would say they could all have been goals. They ended up getting one three out out of the four shots. Um, but he was fouled twice. 
when 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 goals were on. Don O'Shea got a goal, and then he Don O'Shea was held himself for another one. Like you know, so mm. that was good. That was good to see. Um, and then in saying that, they weren't reliant on that either. Like there was the goal came from Neary picking up a ball around centre forward and running straight through that way and popping the pass to O'Shea who finished it. Like you know, so there was a lot of ball worked through the lines, and you could see. We say if a Conor Walsh got got on a ball in, in in the half hour line, more often than not he had an option coming straight through the middle towards goal, um, and he was often that option as well, equally coming through the middle look, looking for a ball and like it doesn't it's not a thing that always comes off, and that's that was the good thing about having Leash up first in that you have more time and more space to execute these things, and when it did break down, they always recovered like you know they always, they only can see the seven points in sixty minutes mm. Ireland like which is. Excellent, but equally, again, it just shows how, how disappointing Leash were. Um, mm. But I think, as you say, you don't want to, I suppose, try to do too much um, in the Kilkenny game. You know, whatever they do, they need to do it well rather than doing too much and having it break down all too often, like, you know, so. Um, but in, still, in saying that, you know, that they, they do seem very comfortable in what they're doing and the understanding of it is, is very good. Um, so. And the fact that they now played a 60-minute game and implemented it and any bit of rustiness they might have had, that should be going out to them now as well. So I'd expect to see them sharper again on Friday night um, and certainly play, playing that same style again, for sure. Yeah, but they're, they're, in terms of that, like they're, they're a group that should be have huge confidence and, and belief in themselves because they're, they're all all early minor winners. Like, you know, there's... There's, they're they're probably the only the only group at the moment that really you know that are like so you know they've that that have such a, a depth of all Ireland middles in their back pocket. We'll say you can have a few with all Ireland clubs and stuff like that as well. But uh, yeah, it just just I was very impressed. You touched on Flynn there exactly like that. I just from picking it up on the stream, he just seemed to be so direct. You know, he was his first his first thought always when he got the ball in hand was to hit for goal and. You know, when you have a player there that's either going to, you know, either get a shot away at the target or get fouled, you know, like you're you're onto a winner there straight away. So um, just in terms of, I suppose you touched on the attack there, um, we might just kind of have, have a look at what did you think of, we kind of mentioned it beforehand, but Sean Erie at centre forward, to, it was, you know, I thought he did reasonably well from the stream, but again, you know, <clears throat> quality opposition left a lot to be told, so... He he operated at centre forward for the most part anyway. By by my reckoning, would I be right in saying that? Oh yeah, it was all it was to- totally orthodox. In fairness, there was not no no sign of anyone dropping back. He, like Ian McGlynn was the, the closest to covering back, but he was just playing as a an ordinary mm. sort of defensive midfielder. Like you know, he was just covered an acre of ground in fairness. But if there was a spot to be covered at the back, it was, it was he that dropped back to do it? But no, it was, it was totally orthodox. So um, interesting to see Neary up there and. As you say, he did an awful lot well, and you know, created the the first goal for O'Shea, and created um was hugely involved in the the first penalty. He he gave a lovely pa- flick on to Kinnear, who was who was then fouled for the penalty, which O'Shea O'Shea stuck. Um, there was sort of like certain times where he made, he made, he made the wrong decision. You know, some of his shot selection was it was just the, the wrong call, and you know, some of his striking was a bit slow for for a forward, and he 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 got hooked hooked and blocked once or twice. Um. But you know he he threw himself around and you know he he's a good foot physical presence there and he's a nice you know there's a, there's a lot of classy hurlers up up that end in 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 the likes of O'Shea and Flannery and Adrian Prendergast will say he adds just something different and I I I kind of I I do I like the idea of him there and you know he's he's he'd be a menace for backs coming out the way and that you know he he's obviously no knows well how to defend and in those tight exchanges around the middle third like he's he's hugely um effect, effective in it mm-hmm. um so again a full 60 minutes there will help him an awful lot in terms of you know what what his role um entails and certainly you know those he did an awful lot of really nice things and then there are areas obviously to sharpen up on but He'll be brought up to speed, and then this week, no doubt. And no, I certainly I was for a first outing there. You know, I, 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 you'd have to be quite impressed with him for sure. Brilliant, brilliant. And I suppose just alongside him, then maybe someone who didn't play minor for Galway, but um, you know, we, 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 we touched him there. But these schools, uh, with Rayfield, Adrian Prendergast, um, he, his role didn't seem to be, you know, hugely from the from the the telly the telly wise. He, he seemed to be filling in a lot defensively. Would you believe, you know, when one of the wing backs actually got forward? And that's something you outlined, but uh, I kind of noticed that as well. You see, what do you see his role being in the future? Do you see, he probably would he want to have more of a scoring threat? Do you think, or 
how do you think with the, the system of play? Do you think he'd be kind of more to cover back and kind of clog up the body or clog the, clog the middle third, we'll say, and, you know, make it a battle zone? I don't know. I, I think he. I think he's very much there as, as a scorer. Like you know, and that that is that is his strength. Like he's the kind of lad you want. You want to see him on ball. Um. No, I thought myself he was a bit bit nervy. Um. Play, playing the last day, you know, he, he got on a, a nice bit of ball and tried to force a couple of things. And he had, he had a shot earlier on that went wide and it kind of I don't know to knock a small bit of confidence out of him or, or whatever. But there were there were other occasions where he might have been better off to go himself and take t- take on the defense because. You know, when he gets running at you, gee, he's not he's awful hard to stop. Um so he did, he forced a couple of passes that got that got intercepted and turned over and that, but he got his points in the second half and you know, he stayed he stayed work, working throughout and I was glad he, he, he got the he got he got the full the full hour, like, you know, because you know, having not played like he was he was obviously part of a minor squad, I'm not sure what year now to be honest, but he never mm. exerted, he he never featured um in minor championship games like so you know, it's and you're going into a team like that full of players that were on the field in, in, in winning all Ireland's like, you know, it's not easy to go straight into that. Um like in terms of club form, he's he'd be he'd be one of the leading players on that team. So you'd be hoping now that again he he'll grow from that. But as I said, just the the way the game was, it was kinda of Kill Cummins and Connor Walsh were more effective than we'll say Dylan Shot and seeing Adrian Prendergast over the other side of the field, just mm. the way the way the game went really, like, you know, um as I say, he kept going, he got his point uh, in, in the second half. But, you know, the there is an onus, the fact that Scalway don't play a sweeper, obviously, and you have wing wing backs bombing forward. There is an onus on your wing on your um, wing forwards to drop back and, and co- cover that that space because you, you you want to keep your six backs really in position um, at all times. And, like, there was times... You know, Leach weren't going to punish them the last day, but Kilkenny definitely will if they're caught out in that regard. Like, you know, there was one there was one puck out in the, the first half um for Derek Faye aimed at aimed at Connor Walsh and like Gil Cummins didn't even look at the ball or anything, he just took off on yeah, a, in a yeah. sprint and abandoned his man totally um uh, running up towards Connor Walsh to support him. Like Connor Walsh won it won it clean and popped popped it out to Gil Cummins and he nailed a beautiful point in fairness. But we'll say had Conor Walsh not had that call bit, ball been caught over Conor Walsh's head, you had a leash wing forward thirty yards down the field with a handy score for the taking, like you know. So mm. there's there's a balance and act in acting in that in in, in 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 that you know you need to if like, Kill Cummins was doing his job, like you know you you wouldn't be saying a worse Kill Cummins, but still you need your in that regard in that case you need your fullback, your goalie, or your cornerback behind. We'll say roaring at somebody to. Either would say the yeah the centre back and the wing forward both to shove over to that side, and would say an Adrian Pendergast to drop back um from his his wing forward position over the far side of the field into that back line as well, or it's your midfielder to drop back or something like you know so mm. it's a case of you know that's something that you're gonna have to manage yourself on the field like it's not it's not up to J- Jeff Linsky and, and and the boys in the line to call that because they're they're not the ones out there like you know they can't spot all the all these little things. Um, but you know, as as I say, if they're if they're not fully concentrated and and, and fully on, on the same page and knowing their roles, Kilkenny would would take advantage of that, like you know, and could could do a lot of damage. So, um, certainly hugely positive signs, as I say, in in, in the style of play they're they're trying to implement. Um, but there's a balance to it, and that you know can't can't leave yourself open at the back as well. Of course, of course, and I suppose um. Just to, while we're on attack, then I, I realise you were just, from just chatting to you, you were impressed with Donal O'Shea overall. I had a, had a couple of tip lads text me afterward the game, and they were wondering when is he getting the, the transfer papers back down for to Kilrua, and I think it is. So, um, yeah. hopefully never says you. Um, but um, yeah, no, just thought two five took his penalty, took his goal very well, fairly good on the freeze as well. I, I might have miscued maybe one or two. I, I I just off the top of my head there. And I suppose it shows great faith in him as well. When we have a free taker like Connor Walsh on the field, that's Jeffrey Linsky and the management team elected to go with Don Lachea from from place balls. We'll say I know Connor went back for one that was a bit further back. All right, you know that might have been in Donald's range, but you know from that it, it seems to be you know he seems to be a player brimming with confidence, and that that game would have done him no harm at all in terms of that. Yeah, definitely. And you know the the thing is with Don Lachea, like. 
I haven't seen him since the one the minor all Ireland, and I'd say you're you're probably the same. Like, and most mm. people wouldn't have unless you're you're you're, you're watching Salt Hill Juniors, like you know. So it's just just that's just the, the level they're playing at. You you don't you don't get to see an awful lot of them. So I didn't have a clue what he was going to offer or what he was going to bring. But I was hugely impressed with how sharp he was, you know. And she some of his stick passing. They 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 were only a lot of them were only fifteen twenty yard passes. Like they were all on the money, and you'd say for a lot of lads, the simple ball would be to just. Um, throw a hand pass, but you know, he, he, you know, he was he he was hugely um sharp as I mentioned, and mm. you know, he's very intelligent too in 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 how he plays the game, and he's he is a real he's he's a real inside forward, like you know, and he's very clever in that regard, and even for his goal, like you know, the the run off the shoulder for for Neary, and you know, finished it superbly as well. You'd have to say, um, like finished with two seventy score, I think it was the seven were all placed balls and the goal from play, and then the other from the penalty. Mm. Um, but he's a nice file to the other two inside with Fleming and Flannery, I think. And you know, if Galway are to be successful this year, I I think that line will probably be hugely responsible for it because you know they have, they have the potential to 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 do serious damage any, any day they go out. Um, so yeah, no, definitely you you'd be very impressed with them. That's for sure. Brilliant, brilliant. I suppose. One of the more youthful lines of the field, we kind of work our way back to the field where we're just having a chat about it, would be um, McLean and Conair. And we outlined before and that we didn't think we'd we'd have any problems there. And it, was, it came to pass. like they, They've kind of bossed that middle third, the, the two of them. Um, I know Conair pushed up a bit towards the end. Would I be right in saying that? Did he, go into the, did he finish up kind of the inside line? Or, you know, when he was, hard, when he, hard to, hard yeah. to nail it down. He certainly he found himself in those positions, but he was often resetting back out the field again. But okay. like, to be honest... The game lost any sort of shape in the second half. Once, yeah. once Leaf dropped, they dropped a man back at half time, um, and that allowed. It was usually Jason Dunham who was free for free for goal, and that suited him and it suited goal mm. off the ground because he was a very positive sweeper in that because they had no fear of what Leaf were going to throw at them going forward anyhow. So he was allowed to push forward, mm. um, and he, he he was very effective in, in that role, and that he got a point himself, and he got on a lot of ball and set up set up a lot of plays like you know so. It was kind of it was very hard to track it really in in, in the second half and you know you came and Killeen coming on for John Fleming at one stage so there was a big shuffle there I think I think it was Kilcomans that ended up going up wing, wing forward and bits like that so mm. it was the kind of game where if you were midfield you could just kind of do as you liked in the second half and he certainly he pushed forward and he, he caused a lot of problems um kind of there, but the first half was kind of what you'd kind of base a lot more so on because there was there was structure to the game in that half. Um and it was McGlynn that was the really really impressive one in, in that half, you know, and probably he probably does have a more defensive role than than Conair does. Um, you know, obviously Conair got scored one two and McGlynn got a point himself, but you would see Conair pushing forward that that bit more. Um, and McGlynn covers an ocean of ground and he's a huge. Yeah, he has he's a he's again we talked about Hurl Hurl like you I think on the previous show last week and he's definitely. Put near nearly top of the pile in that in that team, even at whatever he is, eighteen, nineteen years old, you know. Um, so yeah, first half he got on a, he got on a power ball in any line of the field, really from his own full back line all the way up. Um, and he just he just nearly always makes the right decision on the ball, you know. And again, he was creative an off lot, and he was there as, as a support player not so many times, um. Yeah, you'd be very impressed with how how the two of them took to it, and like you know, again, neither of them the most um, imposing of figures by any means, but like they let they let their their hurling do the talk and appearance, and the two of them together, um, they're they're a really nice combination there in the middle of the field for Galway. Mm, and just on, just on finally in the probably the Leaf game then, or well, I might touch on actually two aspects. I'll touch on the subs in a minute, but um, just just defensively, um, I suppose conceding seven points. So we told not really tested. We 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 don't really know how how good they were. You know what I mean? There's probably flashes, but they, they, they were under better pressure. I thought Jason O'Donnell Jason O'Donnell looked very impressive in, in particular for for such a young player. And you know he's he's another year left after this as well. Um, you know we we spoke on what K Commons can offer going forward, but how was he and the rest of them say defensively? That's it. Like you don't you don't really know. Mm. Um, like Jason Dunn, who he, he he was very impressive in the second half. We didn't really, never really actually play it as a cornerback as such, like you know. And any time he was in the first half, there was nothing really coming in or nothing to do. 
Like I remember he, TJ Brennan having about two balls to deal with in the whole match, you know. Um, so like I thought there was a couple of lines they got caught out. Like you know, Oshin Salmon definitely got caught once or twice. Um, and he'd be a very experienced enough defender, and that you know he's he's always always playing that that sort of a position. He he definitely got caught once or twice, and there was a couple of high balls which I thought they probably could have should have dealt with, and that's what led to the goal chance for Leash. Um, they didn't didn't deal with a, a high ball that came in. I think it was from a free. Um, you know, so yeah, like even Adam Adam Brett had six. I don't know. Um, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a it's a difficult position. It's a position he's obviously not used to. Um, and you're playing you're playing at a at a high level now, and we'll be going through some of the, some some of the lads. Kenny are going to be thrown at them on Friday night, mm. like you know. So it's a totally different challenge. So, um, I'm not sure has he. Does he know his best six? Like, you know, Conor Flaherty came in. Obviously, the game was put to bed at that stage. And, you know, he certainly, he, he's, I'd, I, w- I would say he's probably a better organiser and has a better understanding of, of playing six um, than Brett. I know he, he had a bit of a quad injury going into the game, so could well have started only for that. So it'd be interesting to see that. That could be could be something you might see. Um, yeah, I want just one thing on that might be, I suppose, the under-20s are playing the All-Ireland football final on... But Saturday, it's Saturday evening, so the very next day, so less than twenty four hours, and he's he's goalkeeper for that. So, yeah, I'd be honest with you, I'd say unless he's desperately needed, I wouldn't be, I I wouldn't be expecting to see him now. Would would that be something? I suppose you might have a whole pile of running to do, but just in case, you know what I mean. It is an All Ireland final at the end of the day, like you know, it's a, it's a huge, huge game. Probably been waiting all year, and he's he's a huge he's a huge player for the footballers in that sense. And we're, we're we're never going to say on this show in particular. We're never going to say off for football more than Ireland. But if if there ever is a game, you but you might have to. It, it might be for an All Ireland final. Like so that might be one. You know that we might not see Conor Flaherty. You know as a and I agree. I think he, he's a super option there. And just in terms of that, I suppose while while we're moving on, just in terms of the maybe the bench overall, I suppose. Johnny McDonough came on, but he, he scored two points, a cracking sideline. Mark Kennedy got a goal. Connor Flaherty's we touched on. Came and Killeen scored as well. Um, who else am I missing? The, the, was there anyone no, else was I missing four. there? Just the, just four, the four, yeah. yeah. You, you, like it's a it's it's a serious pinch to throw on. Like if you did have question marks in your defence, like you were touching on, Patrick would say. Definitely, yeah. And I think you know, um, probably Johnny McDonough is the one pushing hardest for inclusion up front, like you know, um, and Flaherty like likewise at the back. Um, like yeah, definitely oh, serious, serious options there, and like you know, look at look at the the, the likes of lads who who didn't come on. Um, still you know, um, although sorry, Christy Brennan came on as well for a couple of minutes at the end. Um, like you, Paddy Cummins there, Mark Hill fullback on the team last year, not not, not mm. even getting a run this year. Like you know, um, old Lawless as well, obviously quality defender for for Athen Rice. Right? So, um, no, definitely plenty of options there, and probably um. Probably a quite defensive um, list of subs, you know, and that you probably have what have you eight subs and um, take out the goalie. You you've you've four backs and three forwards, which obviously you have to have the split somewhere. Um, so you you don't like twenty four is it's it's quite, it's a small enough panel, really, isn't it? You know, when you mm. even 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 the 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 other two, if you got up to twenty six, like you know, you've gives gives you a couple more options. But um, no, certainly what what they're doing with, with what they have there. Is um, yeah, no, they come on, come on, made an impact, and certainly take the claim for the next day. Um, like you know, he's he's certainly not going to be settling on his on his starting fifteen after after, uh, whatever it was, what, twenty six point hammering of leash. Like you know, there's hmm. places up for grabs even even in training this week. Like you know, so um, be interesting to see what he what he goes with, but you know, hard to change a, a winning formula like that as well. So it just will, will be interesting to see the the team selection presumably on on Wednesday night again. Yeah, I suppose it'll probably be this will be what he believes to be his first choice fifteen anyway. If you were if you had a few doubts against Leash, you could kinda of gamble in that sense. So maybe this would probably be you know, I, I wouldn't imagine there'd be a whole pile of change anyway, but just in case there was one or two. I suppose just on Kilkenny then, um the one player we will probably we are all aware of anyway that's still involved from last year would be Owen Cody, um Kilkenny senior this year. Um ran him up in the first half against Galway in the the, the Minister final give Someone like Sean Loftus, you know, fairly experienced player, like, in, well, not experienced at senior level, but would be at under 20 and underage. Awful problems in that game. And Loftus was pulled at halftime, and in fairness, Aiden Hart came on and 
put the shackles on him a small bit. So yeah, so, so Owen Cody, in terms of danger men, he's probably out now. He scored one three last year from full forward in the in the respective clash. Um, in total, there's there's six of six survivors from that team last year. I just just go down through them there, just in case anyone's not familiar. You've um, Dean Mason, the goalkeeper. He's Belly Hill Shamrocks. He was his keeper in the All Ireland run. Isn't he? You wouldn't be right in saying that. So you know mm-hmm. that, what a raft of experience there. We'll say you know to call on you know just this fella that's you know played with the likes of TJ Reid. Uh, that would be calling for the Buckhouse. They'll have, they'll have no issue there. They have if their full backs still available in James Brennan. Um, they're both their wing backs from last year probably are going, are available for selection as well. Maybe one of them could slot in at six in between uh, Connor Heary and David Blanchfield. Um, own Cody's we touched on, he's likely to probably go back in full forward again this year. Um, you've Stephen Donnelly, the corner forward, also also available. And then you had two lads who were, were subs last year, uh, Connor Murphy and Kieran Brennan. Um, they're they're still involved as well. Kieran Brennan in particular, I think he was on the minor team of the year. When Dolan O'Shea is that age group, Sean Neary is that, yeah. that age group. So he's obviously a serious prospect. I think I think he's a I think he's an Irish international soccer player as well. Um, mm-hmm. in terms of I'm I'm going to gather there will be I don't really remember all by him troop be told, but I'm going to gather he's no shortage of pace anyway. As usual, as soccer players probably do have no shortage of pace. So that might be one to look out for. Um, I suppose huge Kieran's presence, and this is as always, and even at that there's there's CBS as well. You know that there's. There's there's fragments of that team also available there. Um I suppose probably two two counties that have dominated schools hurling for for a long while. I know Galway mightn't have had the success in all Ireland terms, but you know, it's Galway V Kinney Normandy and All Ireland finals and stuff like that, whereas Galway might have probably a bit more success at inter county level. It was Kilkenny who were dominating the schools. Um, um we're going to expect probably a whole lot more pressure. Um Kilkenny looked to have a really solid team. You'd imagine Galway was still going his favourites though. Um, just why Rickton, um Galway expect a lot more pressure, Patrick, in this in this out, and you know we're we're going to be testing a whole lot more positions. I suppose one one will probably just focus on the first key battle, will probably likely to be TJ Brennan against Owen Cody. How do you how do you see that playing out? Or you know it's very hard to tell, obviously. Like, but you know it's it, it's one that if we could probably get on top in, we're we're likely to have you know a huge say. It's probably likely to have a huge say in the outcome of the contest. No, no question. Yeah, it, it could well be the battle that, that decides the game in, in many respects. Like you know, we'll say since Owen Cody played against Galway last year in under twenty, he he's gone to a different level. Obviously, having a full year of start playing like senior hurling from the start, like you know that'll that'll bring him on a tone. And even physically, he's a much bigger man now than he was this time last year. So um, mm. you know, he's going to be mainstay in that like, Kenny fifteen for the next decade or so. All if 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 he stays fit and healthy, like you know. So huge challenge obviously for Galway to deal with like, you know, TJ Brennan wouldn't be the most experienced full back by any means, but he's still your most experienced and your best defender for sure. So, you know, he's the he's the, the lad most likely to pick him up anyhow. Um could could maybe pick him up no matter where he goes, we don't we don't know. It'd be interesting to see that. Um mm. but I'd imagine Cody won't stray too far from from full forward anyhow, um just with the, the threat he carries in there. So a big challenge for for, for TJ, um, physicality wise, you know, you'd, you'd expect like he's he, he will well able to stand up to him, and um, big big imposing man himself in his own right, um, you know, so I think it's just a case of, you know, getting the ball to the ground and then relying on your your centre back and your corner backs to come in and give him a hand, like you know, because mm. if you're left one on one with Uncle for sixty minutes, you're just not going to get come out well out of it, like because it's just, you know, in the the, the vast all it takes is Cody to win two balls and he's two, he, he could have two goals scored like you know you could win the other eight and you're still coming out of the game as if you've had a roast and like you know so yeah. um, it, there is there is a bit of a reliance on lads around him to, to give him, to give him a, hand, a dig out and a hand out here and there like but you know I think if you just if you get the ball to ground and slow down slow down the play don't let, let him win clean possession and get it, get his head and his, his eyes on goal like you know you're kind of you're halfway there, and you'll have the bodies footing back at that stage to to hopefully clog them up and you know keep them keep keep the goal keep the goal intact on the hill because you know as with any any team if you keep 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 them away from from hitting the back of the net like you're 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 a long way to beating them as well you know um so there's yeah and, and equally you know the the likes of Kieran Brennan I do I do remember him playing minor and he was he was he was at, at probably. 
those, those couple of years, he had probably, he, he definitely had two years playing county minor anyhow. He was one of the main the main threats really, like you know, and blistering pace. Uh, he really does. Um, even with Kieran's, I remember him causing a lot of problems for Prez at in, in in a couple of games. So he could well be in the corner beside him as well. So you know, you're you're gonna have a big task for either Jason Dunahu or or Oshin Salmon there as well. So you know, mm-hmm. keeping um keeping tabs on them will be difficult for the hour. But you know, it's a it's a six man seven man effort plus the two midfielders would say for a lot of it. So. You know they'll they'll certainly need to put in a big shift, um, and you know hopefully again having got a, a full game together as a unit last week, that'll hopefully help them out big time as well this week. You know, yeah, I suppose one thing about having the, the game and it has its positives, but there's the drawback in that Kikini got to actually have a look at us and see the way we line up and see where potential weaknesses and strengths might be. You know that would be another factor in it. I I personally would take the game happy days on yeah. telly and just get the, the dry run of it but there is the element there that they will have seen how we will set up and they could potentially move on Cody or, or your Kieran Brennan around to, you know, to cause as much havoc as possible or you know what I mean like, in, that, in that kind of sense too so there is the drawback there do, 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 do you see that being something that Kikini like Kikini are fairly they're down a few from last year in fairness in Galway you know, while they didn't perform, they still were what? They were within four points of them and Kikini had players like Adrian Mullen and Nine Brazil and you know, the players of serious quality last year when you when you reflect on the year that we, we, we knew about Mullen, like say and we knew about Brazil, but there's probably they probably had a nice team last year as well down on top of it. So, you know, maybe that, that defeat wouldn't have been as big a shock as as uh, on reflection when you when you reflect on maybe the teams. Definitely, yeah, and even like, you know, that that year minor there were there was very little between the teams when they played and in seventeen, it would have been the the equivalent, like you know. So, uh, no, certainly not a not 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 a big shock. But I think it was the, the manner of the call of performance that was really disappointing that day, rather than the actual result, you know. Um, but yeah, the, obviously, New Orleans has have similar sort of number of survivors, and um, but you know the fact that we've won the last three All Ireland minors, you'd be expecting the the lads that come in from Galway to be that bit better, hopefully, than the the lads that come in from Kilkenny. But it's a good point you make about the. Them having the option, the opportunity to to watch Galway, um, I don't know, did they did they rent out one of the one of the apartments across the way, you know, more park to to get to get a, a proper proper view of themselves? I don't know, but um, even on Teddy, you 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 see plenty, and um, I'm sure they can watch us talking all about it now, and you know, and even if they weren't sure they weren't anything, we we would all told them now, but I like, would say, for example, like you know, they wouldn't have been planning for to face a Jim McIlcumbins at wing back, like you know, they would have been. Same mm. as let us nail down to start at, at ten, like but here he is playing playing at five. Um so that that sort of thing. Um, you know, you again you could say probably Mark Hill was more, more likely to start at full back, haven't played there last year. <clears throat> but here he is not even getting a run last week. So mm. um there's these, these many little lots of little facets and obviously the, the makeup of the forward line, you know, again we were only guessing at it last week and they would have been only guessing really too until they actually saw them in action. So in terms of matchups and that, you know, they certainly they'll have a lot of those in their heads this week, and we don't really have that luxury. And you know, I'm sure you probably Jeff would have heard bits and pieces about how they were playing, getting on in challenges and whatnot. But you know, challenges are challenges at the end of the day, and they're called challenges for a reason. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's not it's not championship, and they wouldn't have been shown their full hand. You know, and you you wonder were were always shown their full hand the last year? Are they going to play that same mm. way again the next day? I'd imagine they will based on what they were doing and how advanced and how much different things they were sort of trying. You know, there was a clear enough sort of way of playing and a nice mix to what they were doing. So I wouldn't expect to see them deviating from that. Um, but in saying that, you know, Kenny will be planning for that this week. Um, so it just will, will be an interesting to see how it plays out. Are, are they able to apply enough pressure to stop Galway or you know, will you be hoping maybe Galway will start that bit quicker and get on top early on and drive it on from there? Having had the the, the good run out um altogether last week, so very interesting to see how it plays out. Um, you know, you couldn't you couldn't see there being a whole pile in it either way. No. Um, but you'd certainly you like you'd have to be confident as as a Galway person in both in I suppose in in the personnel that we have there and just the confidence that they have. As you mentioned, the fact that with so many all Ireland medals in their in their back pockets already, 
and the fact that they all know what it's like to beat Kilkenny, like you know, that's that's worth a lot as well. Um, so you know, he's, yeah, as you say, you'd, you'd you'd have to be confident, and if you get through this week, you're going to be a rage in our favour to win to win a Leinster title. So um, you know, here's hoping it's a perfect. And with that, we'll we'll leave it there because there's not a whole pile we can't really speculate on the way Kilkenny are going to line up. You know, we, we all we can do is kind of bring the players bring the players that we know of to the table and kind of have a chat about them. So, yeah, no, it promises to be a, a fascinating battle at the week or on Friday night again. So, you know, what, five days out from Christmas or maybe six days out from Christmas, should I say. Um, yeah, so look, at, we'll, we'll leave it there. Look, at, thanks a million for tuning in and we'll be back to for a review show next week on, on the game. And please God, we might have a chance to look ahead maybe in preview as well. You'd never know. So, um yeah, we'll 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 leave it there. We, we won't say happy Christmas yet because there's no point. We'll we'll please God we'll be back with another shot. Um, Patrick, thanks a million, and we'll chat soon.